Hello, welcome to Neil Scribe. Our journey picks up where we left off on episode one. Captain Cook, Joseph Banks, and the rest of the inhabitants of the HMS Endeavor were sailing towards Cape Horn. Their destination is King George's Island, present-day Tahiti, to measure the transit of Venus, the most expensive scientific investigation up to that point in history. The water surrounding Cape Horn is incredibly dangerous and has earned a strong reputation. An old saying goes, below 40 degrees latitude, there is no law. Below 50, there is no God. So the Endeavour faced strong winds and high seas from the west, and it took Cook and the crew five weeks to pass through South America. Cook then had the Endeavour sail away from their destination, heading southwest for around 300 miles. These waters were uncharted, and Cook wanted to explore them before heading north. Cook didn't find anything, so he turned the Endeavour northwest towards King George's Island. When January 30th, 1769 came, it was almost two months after departing Rio de Janeiro. And by the end of February, the Endeavour was well into the Pacific Ocean, with no hint of land around. The nerves of everyone on board must have been on edge at this part of the voyage. The Pacific was still mostly uncharted at this time and contained very few landmarks to aid navigation, and it's also sprinkled with dangerous reefs. Take the Spanish as an illustration. The Spanish discovered the Solomon Islands in the 1500s and then could not find them again for 200 years. That's insane. Anyway, the Endeavour spent more than two whole months surrounded by nothing but open ocean. Finally, on April 4th, 1769, one of Banks' servants spotted land. It was the gorgeous atoll of Vahitahi. As they approached, a group of natives armed with weapons watched them with unfriendly eyes, and Cook decided to keep going. They passed several islands in the following days until they finally sighted King George's Island on April 11th. The Endeavour group was fascinated with the strong-looking tattooed natives that approached the Endeavour on large canoes with tall sails. They observed surfing for the first time, watching the natives surf large waves in waters that the Europeans would not dare swim in. So the group met with the natives and they exchanged items for food. The natives particularly wanted iron nails. But they would soon find out that the natives had sticky fingers. Daniel Salander had his opera glasses stolen, Banks had his pistol taken, and Cook lost his stockings from his cabin no less. However, the natives soon realized that they could swap food for the items that they wanted instead of taking them. But that was not until one unfortunate event. One of the natives tried to take a musket and was shot and killed as he ran away. Banks then served as a peacemaker after the incident and tried his best to mend relations after the event. So after a few days, Cook had the Endeavour anchor at Madave Bay on April 13th and began the preparations for the observation that was two months away on June 3rd. Considering the loose fingers of the natives, if the wrong piece of equipment were stolen, the entire mission would be jeopardized. So Cook decided to build a fort in addition to the observatory that had to be made. They called it Fort Venus and consisted of stone walls and was equipped with two heavy guns. But on the night the fort was completed, a native snuck past the guard and stole a vital piece of the observatory. Luckily, the crew found the component broken near the fort and managed to repair it. So with the fort constructed, a lot of the weight of the mission now sat on the shoulders of astronomer Charles Green. Green came from humble beginnings and worked his way up in his field, eventually working directly under the Astronomy Royal. And he proved to be very useful throughout the voyage, helping Cook compute the ship's longitude when needed. Now, the challenge for Green was calculating the exact coordinates of the observatory, which was a critical part of the calculation. Observing the sky, he tried to calculate the coordinates 48 times and kept getting slightly different results. So by the time June 3rd came, the observatory was ready with two telescopes and a special clock to time the transit. It was a sweltering day at over 110 degrees in the shade. Green, Cook, and Salander were the official observers at Fort Venus. And Cook also formed two other observation teams that included the help of Banks to measure the transit on neighboring islands in case something went wrong at Fort Venus. Unfortunately, the views in the telescopes were fuzzy or cloudy, hindering the observation. But the teams did the best they could and recorded their measurements. 
There were 76 other observations around the world that day, and Fort Venus being in the Southern Hemisphere was an essential part of the overall investigation, and scientists would spend years analyzing the data collected. Using the data, scientists eventually determined the distance to the Sun to be 93.7 million miles from Earth, or 150 kilometers. With the use of radar technology, we know the distance to the Sun today to be 92.9 .9 million miles, or 149.59 million kilometers away. Considering the technology they had and the challenges they faced, the accuracy of the 1769 astronomers was impressive, only 8 tenths of a percent off from today's measurement. And it wasn't until many years later that scientists realized that the hot sun caused a blurriness on the mirror of the telescopes. So back to the story at hand, nine long months after they left England, Captain Cook and company completed their mission, but their voyage was far from over. You see, before departing on the voyage, Cook was handed sealed secret instructions that were not to be opened and read until after the transit was observed. Now, Cook finally broke the seal and read the secret instructions from the Admiralty. The instructions were to sail south from Tahiti, where there was believed to be a lost continent. And if the lost continent was found, Cook was to explore as much of its coast as possible and measure its depths. He was also ordered to record the soil quality and potential resources of the land, including wildlife and harvest-worthy vegetation, among many other parameters. Cook and Banks would not see the shores of England for another 25 months. Indeed, the voyage of discovery was far from over. All right, thank you so much for watching. This episode was made in collaboration with Rob from the awesome YouTube channel, Decoded. Rob made the incredible render of the cabin of the Endeavor that you saw in the video using the program Blender. Even though I don't know how to use Blender, I really wish I did. I love watching his videos and watching him create incredible worlds from scratch. You can see how we brought the HMS Endeavors cabin to life on his channel. I put a link in the description. You should definitely check it out. So I hope you are enjoying this brand new series because it will be a big part of my channel moving forward. I just finished reading the book that the next expedition will be about and I can't wait to finish my research. Anyway, part 3 will post on September 13th, so be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. For next week's video, we will be exploring what's going on with Elon Musk's Neuralink and brain user interfaces at large, so be sure to check that out as well. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.